Good afternoon, Lace Jump and I'm John. This is Media True Dirt and welcome back to our Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands, where last time we took part in the dumbest fight in all of Fallout 3. Battering a gang boss to death with a wooden plank in order to take over his gang, which immediately decided it didn't fancy having a leader anymore. And today, to continue the theme, we're going to be doing one of the weirdest missions in all of Fallout 3, because seriously, Everything about this thing is bloody bizarre. And the first problem we face is simply getting to our aforementioned mission. So, okay, back to the Citadel. Let's check in with Tristan. We've got the lovely Tesla coil we got for him last time. So, hand that over. And yes, indeed, he's going to have a whole bunch of stuff he needs me to get on with. You found a Tesla coil? Excellent. I'll see to it that this reaches the scribes immediately. You've done good work, soldier. Are you ready for your next assignment? We don't have time to spare. Okay, again, not 100% sure I ever actually signed anything that says I work for you, but go on, Tristan. How about you give me a briefing anyway, because uh, there's something very important he's about to hand over. Based on the data you brought us from the relay station, we've identified where the Enclave is basing their operation. It seems they have a second base of operations at Adams Air Force Base outside of DC. The only safe way to get there is through the presidential metro used by the government before the war. You're going to be on your own again for now. The rest of the Brotherhood will be providing a distraction so you can slip in undetected. Once you breach the presidential metro and get to Adams Air Force Base, look for the resupply crate. Inside you'll find your new orders and hopefully we can put a working Tesla cannon into your hands. And there we flipping go, giant pile of XP, who dares wins begins, etc, etc. But way more important than that, that lets me access a brand new area I couldn't get into previously. So yes indeed, how about we mosey on over to the presidential metro, buried right in the center of the DC ruins. Here we go, there's my destination, the White House Plaza. Now, fortunately, I appear to have, yes, already passed a very nearby Pennsylvania Avenue South, and that will do very nicely. Easiest way to get there, to my mind, is, uh, yes, just to go to the mall, then loop around the back off of the National Archives. Uh, the station there will get you right to where you need to go, and nice and easy. Before setting off, though, I'm going to strongly suggest, yes, bring basically every bloody energy cell you could carry, because, um... We're going to be needing them, potentially. And I hope, by the way, you're ready for a fight, because, yes, this particular street tends to be absolute cocking nonsense. So, uh, just uh, mosey on in by the Luxy of it. Okay, that's a distant explosion, laser fire, etc, etc. Brothers are definitely around here. Mutants, too. Quite possibly Talon Company. Everyone shows up occasionally. Okay, so, um, yes, as I was saying, just... Chaos. Chaos cooking everywhere at the moment. And I'm definitely hearing there's a vertebrate somewhere. No idea cooking where, but um, yes, this area tends to descend into absolute nonsense. But whatever it was, uh, looks like the Brotherhood did pretty bloody well. Just, uh, yes, make a left, head straight up the street, go and get yourself some reinforcements. Because uh, for the most part, you can avoid the fight. Like, you know, the enemies take care of each other, which is very, very useful indeed. So, uh, I mean, something died. Super mutant brutes, it turns out. Lovely. So yes, right here next to this lovely statue, right in front of the White House, or to be precise, the ruins left of it... You have got a lovely Brotherhood base. This is where these guys have set up shop. Though, um, yes, as the sign warns, uh, don't actually go too close to the ruins of the White House. It turns out that was most definitely a target during the Great War. It's not looking so hot right now. That hole right there, that's where the White House used to be. Don't worry though, rads aren't going to stop me. We're going to be going in for a closer look in a second. But um, uh, yes, before we do, a truly weird thing in this area. Right next to the Brotherhood camp, there is an old hotel that is, uh, I suppose officially, a Brotherhood outpost or something. And I have no idea why this thing is here. It's just this tiny interior with, yes, a lovely ridge shotgun right there. If you trigger it, this guy gets up, otherwise he's having a lovely nap. But, um, yes, sorry about that. Did kind of just, uh, set off your trap. This is it. It's just, um, one room with one guy who sleeps in one bed 
until such time as you wake him up by setting off his trap. That's literally it. I have no idea why this thing exists. Aside, I suppose, from yes, further reinforcing my slightly outlandish theory that the placement of the Chinese Army Spec Ops training manuals uh, indicates just how thoroughly the Chinese had infiltrated DC. Because uh, this hotel, of course, is right next to the White House. And what have we got here? Clear evidence that once upon a time, there were agents here too. Still, as you'd probably reasonably expect, obviously presidential metro means metro. And that means we're going down underground, damn it, right here to the exciting and sexily named utility. Not utility, you know, tunnel or room or anything, just utility. Now this area you can actually come into at any point during the game, it's just the time at yes. Until you're doing a who dares wins, there's not much you can do down here. Because this here rather crucial door to the presidential sublevel is actually locked up until you're doing a who dares wins right at the end of Broken Steel. You can't open it with lockpicking, there's no key, there's no anything. It's just permanently locked until such time as you're doing the last mission in Broken Steel. And uh, just um, bear that in mind because it's going to be important down the line. Before we go in though, you may notice, yes, this area is a rather radioactive. We go a bit more this way. Really radioactive, in fact, because, okay, do not miss this door. This door's hilarious because uh, it doesn't actually go out to Pennsylvania Avenue. What it actually does uh, is lead you into the ruins of the White House, which is marvellous. So, uh, yes, we're actually in that crater we saw previously. Now, as a result of that, yes, indeed, we can actually explore what used to be, I mean, presumably... A bunker under the White House, given we appear to be well under street level. So, were any of these individuals I just got attacked by a skeleton? Dear, oh flipping dear. Are these ghouls potentially the president? Probably not, given, yes, in Fallout 3, in the pre-war, anybody who's in any position of authority is either cowardly, stupid, evil, corrupt, or all of the above. So, uh, yes, we could be fairly confident that the president evacuated the White House long before the bombs fell. But yes, maybe with a couple more rads away just to get rid of those lovely, lovely rads. Get me back to where I should be. Yes, indeed. How about we mosey in to the presidential sub-level itself? Step one is nice and simple, nice and easy. It's a pretty linear area. We literally need to make our way through it. So, uh, fortunately, it is a little bit on the guarded side. The automated security is still active, which is precisely why I told you to go and pick up some energy cells. Because the pulse gun, blimey, that will just uh, melt any automated security. So, uh, let me flip it go. Some nice robots, though. Okay, with high sneak, I do enjoy this, by the way. It's really easy to just work around this guy. So, uh, wait for him to uh, turn away. Get round over to uh, here, etc, etc. In just a second, uh, he'll pass back in that direction. And you can sneak around him. And just pretend for a second uh, you're playing a stealth game. But basically, screw that noise. We don't need to, because... Uh, oh, uh, the flat damage that you get with the pulse gun is ridiculous. So down you go, you stupid loser. No trouble whatsoever. Here we go, turrets too. And turrets can be seriously nasty at the high level. So yes, an auto delete turret button. That there, that's worth flipping having. Just to sort that out, make sure there's no more. Pretty sure there we go. More sentry bots go down, John. Always take the best shot. There's no reason not to because, uh, yes, like any shot does the same damage because uh, it's flat damage. So, uh, as long as we hit him, uh, four shots, he's done. Just take the easy shot. Do not worry about, you know, the normal weak points or anything. And there we go. White House, East Wing over there. Honestly, you know, not the most exciting wing. Everyone knows the West Wing's the sexy one. East Wing, no one cookie cares what goes on in the East Wing. It's probably just where they like, you know, store chairs for when important stuff's happening over in the West Wing. The Senate Luncheon with Chinese Ambassador Zhu Ling. Scheduled for October 31st at noon has been indefinitely postponed. And just there we get our first introduction to, yes, a new character we're going to be meeting momentarily, though. Okay, don't mind me. Sorry, sorry, did not see you coming in right there. Yes, indeed. As you can see, this place is still operating to some extent or another. We've got lights, we've got robots, we've got all sorts of various bits and pieces. The AI that's running the show is still very much alive. 
and also making announcements, which is delightful. While we're passing by here, however, just inside the second long train tunnel, yes, you're going to be wanting to pay attention to this lovely skeleton right here, because this chappy was not just any skeleton. Oh no, this man was a a senator, or maybe like a senate employee. Anyway, he's got a key card, and that's really bloody important. Also, due credit to whoever, like, you know, did the various uh, fun extra teddy bear and gnome scenes in Broken Steel, because yes, they are very detailed, next to the ones in the base game. Right here, we've got, yes, two teddy bears uh, tied to the tracks with a helper's sign, obviously, you know, the same one you find outside Vault 101, just shrunk down a bit, and a gnome who is not just presumably responsible, but also taking photos. So, uh, no, 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 no. We're going to help the teddy bear if we can, okay? The teddy bears get to be over here. We're going to rescue them. Daz for the gnome. Dear, oh dear, sir. What an ironic end to you this shall be. In fact, you know what? Hang on, John. John, John, John. While we can't actually summon a train, what we can summon is... Uh, a railway spike. There we go. That's a good dramatic end to you. Hopefully, you know, you guys enjoyed that. Anyway, let's go say hi to the person, sort of, who's actually running the show. Warning. Unauthorized personnel will not be tolerated in the presidential metro. Please access this workstation and identify yourself. So say hello to our new robot friend, and uh, there's various ways to get her on side. Uh, a difficult speech check will do the job, uh, as well as science or robotics expert, because, uh, well, she's a machine. But the easiest method by far is just basically to play along. This is the system that runs this metro, and it's trying to get, you know, senators, uh, senate employees, etc, etc, onto trains and moving and all that good stuff. If I've got the Senate ID, which I do, that's why we picked that up, she's basically going to be very chill, very friendly, and me and her can be best friends. Though, what I do enjoy is, uh, there's absolutely no reason for you to engage with her at all, if you don't want to. Just a pinch of lockpick, a dash of murder, and you can get straight onto Adam's Air Force Base without discussing anything with this robot whatsoever. It's not even that difficult, to be honest. It's a hard-locked door that gets you into the presidential metro proper. Then you just go, find the robot who's the repair droid, murder it, get the fuses, plug them in, train starts working, everything's gorgeous. But no need to do that. Not when, you know, me being a Senate employee and all, I can actually be best friends with our new robot buddy here. So, yes indeed. Hello there. I'm the new senator from Idaho. It's a new state. We're really proud of it. Warning. Due to a major security breach, this system is on code red. Alert status. Prepare for security check. Attempting to identify local access user. Identification failed. This access point is restricted. Only to authorized personnel. Please identify yourself. And as I was just saying, a hang about here, I'm a United States Senator indeed. Marvelous. Though yes, just like the door, the science check is really not that difficult to do. The speech check, however, is really rather bloody difficult. So yeah, science or just pick up the thing. Way, way easier. And uh, honestly, I pick my option here based on uh, how friendly and chatty it makes our robo friend. Because uh, yes, if you just play along, she's way more likely to chat and be chill. Identity verified. Welcome. How may I assist you today? And here we flipping go. I can now, you know, ask all sorts of questions, etc, etc. Though really, the best thing about, yes, playing nice with her is uh, you can make all the robots chill out. Up to this point, they've been attacking me on site. Henceforth, they'll actually be on my side if there's any trouble down the line. But yes, I do rather like this AI. She's rather cool. So, you know, we could start off by asking her what she does. My primary function is to maintain security for the presidential metro system and ensure the safety of all its passengers. I was installed and activated within the presidential metro on April 14th, 2065 and switched on at precisely 5.20 a.m. I have been carrying out this primary function since that inception date 
But, um, yes, funny old thing, are you aware of that whole end of the world thing that may explain why there's been a slight lack of passengers? While I am not privy to current or past events due to severance of my communications system, I am aware a situation must have occurred. However, as long as I am still able to function, my directive remains unchanged. I will amend my memory array with the information you have provided. I like Margot. Margot's great. So, um, yes indeed. Like, just so we're clear, you understand that everybody and everything's dead. That information appears congruous with the information you have already provided. However, such an event does not change my primary function. And if you want to, you can even praise her for being so dedicated to her job. My core central processing and logic unit has many variables and opportunities for independent thought and learning. However, my primary function is paramount to any other function and must be followed until I am no longer able to perform the task. I appreciate your concern regarding this matter and have noted and filed it in my memory array. So yes, while she's like, you know, very calm to the point, seems very focused on this one thing she has to do, it does rather feel like, you know, she actually appreciates you praising her dedication to the job, which I do rather like. Margot's great. Access to the train line to Adams Air Force Base is currently impossible due to a security breach in the southeast tunnels. The breach has caused damage to the train line as well, and it must be repaired before it can be utilized. And here we go, my new main objective. Either I help Margot to repair the system, or I just find a way to do it myself. Internal visual sensing equipment is detecting numerous unidentified persons in the southeast tunnels area. The individuals have damaged metro equipment and refused dialogue with our security units. In accordance with U.S. security statute A567-B, the use of deadly force has been authorized. And yes, indeed, if we dig into who these people might be... My apologies. My sensing equipment in that area must be damaged. My equipment indicates the persons possess no internal body heat and are emitting lethal levels of radiation. And there we flipping go, we're walking into a war zone between Margot's robots and the ghouls they want to clear out of the tunnels, which does make this situation really rather bloody bizarre because, yes, it means the fight varies a lot depending on what level you come here. If you rush the entire main game and get her at a fairly low level, then basic ghouls versus robots, the robots are going to have a pretty easy time. But if you come here at a high level, like, you know, I have, then there's a good chance Reavers are going to spawn. And Fallout 3 Reavers are going to destroy any robot present. But, um, fortunately, I've got a plan for that. So, let's mosey on into aforementioned Warzone, because the door is now open, the robots are now friendly, and don't forget, I'm wearing the ghoul mask, so they're friendly too. And here we flipping go, that's okay. That's just a Roma, okay? That one's fine. It's only when Reavers start showing up that we've potentially got a problem. So, uh, honestly, this is going to entirely depend on... Right, so there's two Reavers right there. Good, 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 good. So, uh, what the game kind of, you know, wants you to do at this point is uh, back up the robots, take out the Reavers, etc, etc. But, um, yes, there is actually an alternative solution. One that arguably is much easier because... Uh, Bloody hell, that's a lot of Reavers. That's like a dumb amount of Reavers. They're going to win this fight extraordinarily easily. Like, oh yeah, just look at that. They are tearing those sentry bots apart. But that doesn't actually matter. Like, you know, I'm not trying to join the faction of Margo or anything. All I want to do is get this base operational. 
And all that means in real terms is that we need to repair the flipping fuse. So here we go, literally just a mosey over to the very end of the area. Obviously, you know, the robots are friendly, and the ghouls are too, though... Okay, well, this is just bloody irritating. Hang on, you were supposed to be dead. I was kind of, yes, banking on the many Reavers I spawned by being a very high level, just immediately coming in and taking out the Sentinel unit. And this Sentinel unit is really rather bloody important because he's the one who can fix the power box that's just around the corner. If this guy dies, then as a result of that, he just drops the fuse and I can plug it in. Because as it turns out, yes, repairing fuses are really not that complicated. Though, irritatingly, he's decided on this occasion to survive. Okay, I'm going to regret this, but um, I've decided I'm going to go make some new friends. Which is, uh, we're just going to take off the ghoul mask. And now we're just going to get a bit of attention from these guys. There we go. You guys just come in this direction, like all of you, if you'd be so kind. Maybe like a nice... Yes, a pulse grenade. That will do the job. Hello there. I would like you to all start following me, though. Okay, this is, this is fine. Just take out the turret and, like... Once that's done, because they're using, like, rads and whatnot, I'll be the only enemy, and they'll all start chasing me. I'm going to regret this. Like, I'm really going to regret Okay, so now they're probably going to be... Here we go. They probably decided they were... Yep, they're, they're, they're chasing me now. And they're Reavers, meaning... Okay, just, just basically spam. That was always going to be a bit of a dicey thing to do. Yes. Okay, I've decided to go for, yes, the path of least resistance. As elegant as it would have been had the ghouls been able to win. No, 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 no. How about instead we just pop a couple of pulse rounds in the back of this thing? Admittedly, Margot's not going to be thrilled about this. But screw Margot, this is going to get the job done. Like, way, way, way easier. There's the fuse. Lovely. Literally just a plug a thing into thing. And there we go. The train now works. Though, um, that has, like, you know, activated a, a bit of extra security. There's not going to be delighted about my anti-robot agenda. But it's nothing a pulse gun can't deal with. And no trouble there whatsoever. No, it's shooting me if you'd be so... Oh, I might be about to run out of uh, pulse. I might have literally just enough pulse to make this happen. I think that might be it, actually. So... Okay, we pulled that off just in the nick of time. Brilliant. And so here we are. We could just pull this lever, head over to Adam's Air Force Base, wrap up the game, etc, etc. This is very literally the final moment in the final area before you go to the end game. And yet this here, this is the exact moment that Fallout 3 decides to introduce the second part of its sexy underwear mission. Because if, right now, instead of going and doing the thing you're supposed to do to complete the game, you just turn around and mosey up this staircase right here instead, you will find a skeleton sitting right next to some jet and a note. Sorry, my darling. If someone finds this, please get this to my lover at Le Maison Beauregard Hotel in East Georgetown. He'll want to hear what I have to say. My darling, they found me. I tried to get away. I tried to get away so we could be together once again. I know you risked your life to get it to me. Combing the ruins, avoiding the super mutants. All for me. It seems I shall never lay my eyes upon your gift. You... You'll have to keep it. And remember me. Every time you see it. I'm so sorry, my darling. So, so sorry I've let you down. So many have died for this thing. So many hearts have been broken. Please remember. I'll always love you. You will be with me forever, in my spirit. I... 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 love... 
love you. So, okay, as you can hear, we're dealing with something very sad, very serious, a really big emotional moment. It's very important we get this message to this woman's lover located in a hotel deep in the DC ruins. Okay, back outside, and yes, our destination is Georgetown, which you may recall a long, long time ago we have been to previously. I explored like 80% of it, leaving one tiny bit until right now, because uh, yes indeed, this place only gets interesting once you've triggered this baffling mission that only begins uh, right at the end of Broken Steel. So, just to travel straight back to a Georgetown North, you may remember... How on earth are you still dead? It has been so many weeks since we last visited this place, but... Okay, you know what? I won't complain. This is good news for me. Because, uh, yes indeed, there's the lovely sci-fi town house right here. 2026 Bradley Place, which we've, yes, discussed in detail previously due to the really rather cool story buried away inside. But, um, we're going straight past that because, uh, yes indeed, we need to fight our way past a big old pile of mutants to get to the hotel right at the southeast of town. Though, um, you know... To be careful, there's a very good chance they could be overlords at this point. And off to a good start here, while Master immediately pinned to the wall. A lovely. So okay, just... Just walk straight over a pressure plate there. Fortunately, I suspect I already walked over it once already. So, uh, no trouble there whatsoever. Just, um, yes, maybe get up to a nice raised position. Just so we can... Good. There is a master. He does have, yes, what would appear to be a rather nasty machine gun thing. That's okay, Lincoln's repeater should sort you out. And honestly, I'm not convinced you've really got the range to do much to me, buddy. Right, down you go without being able to really pull off much at all. Lovely. And that's for all these individuals down here. Okay, one basic mutant. I mean, I was about to suggest, you know, a big giant chain reaction of cars. That might be fun, and uh, he's coming this way anyway. You know what? Screw it. If it's not already been triggered, uh, let's see if we can... I suspect these cars have already exploded. Well, that's fine. You're just a basic super mutant. I can just, you know, shoot you with bullets. That'll do the job too. Oh, I knew it was hoping for too much to get away without an overlord. Right. Okay, you know what? This is a uh, fine one... Did I just shoot the sign next to me due to dodgy hitboxes? I suspect I did. That's okay. With just a one or two crits, we can get the kill here. That'll get me a lovely all my AP back. Brilliant. Now, as for you, buddy, you don't get a gun anymore, okay? No tribeam laser rifle for you. Then we just slowly start picking you apart here. Okay, he's caught up. He's realized he doesn't have a gun. That's all fine. Just one in the leg. Marvelous. So he's now in trouble. And now, screw it. Firelands, we've been picking up so fucking many alien power cells. It's time to actually use the bastards because... Even against an overlord. On maximum difficulty. Broken Steel's nastiest bastards. Oh yeah. That'll flip and do the job. Right there. Bloody hell. We even got the plasma meltdown explosion. Lovely. So say hello to La Maison Beauregard. In the base game, a fairly boring and interesting location that's just got a handful of mutants inside it. But um, yes, thanks to Broken Steel, yes, it's now a whole bunch more interesting. And uh, okay, just in case you've forgotten when I say the second part of the sexy underwear quests... Once upon a time in Marigold Station, yourself. there was a man called Lugnut who tried to rob me in order to steal some naughty nightwear, which he apparently wanted for some reason. I talked him out of it, and as a result of that, he's actually still alive. Yeah, yeah, just keep on walking. He's not desperately thrilled uh, to have lost the naughty nightwear, though, and, uh, okay, I said at the time, this was only the first half of uh, the truly baffling uh, sexy underwear mission, and now we're finally here, the second part. So into the hotel we go, let's see what's waiting for us. You may notice up top there, there is a lovely individual called Lagbolt. This here is Lugnut's brother. I know it sounds like I'm making this up, but I'm not, 
and I could prove it, okay? There's going to be evidence down the line. Now, you may also recall, like 10 minutes ago, we found a note saying, Oh my goodness, please get this tape to my lover at this location. He needs to know what happened. Very emotional, very heartfelt, etc, etc. Meaning, you'd probably assume you could come to this location and either find the lover's corpse as well, tragedy, tragedy, etc. Or, hand it over, you know, pretty typical Fallout mission. But no, Lagbolt's here. And Lagbolt is hostile. And he can never not be hostile. He simply shoots you on sight under all circumstances. There is nothing you can do about it. Oh, but you know what? There is one alternative solution, which is uh, just get behind him. We could just help ourselves to. Oh, bloody hell. Lightbolt could, in theory, just survive, because all we need to do is mosey up here. The suitcase, by the way, can only be opened with the key, cannot be lockpicked. And that gets me the all-nighter nightwear. A new and improved version of the naughty nightwear, giving you not just charisma plus one, but endurance plus one too. Though in terms of the design, yes, it is the same as the Naughty Night 12. Well, hang on, I'm kind of possibly going to be spotted by this chappy in a second. Uh, yes, like, it is the same as the Naughty Night 12. Though what is hilarious is, uh, the effect in the Pip-Boy is listed as Naughty Night Fun, which is rather charming. As for the note we stole, however, Lags, this is your big bro. Hope you got the package. I had two of these things especially made for us in Virginia by the tailor. He's a master of this stuff. I know you and your chit will love it. Try not to wear her out too fast if you catch my drift. Hugs, lug nut. So, okay, there's, there's a lot to go through here. So, the tailor in Virginia. This never comes up again. There is no mention of any tailor in any subsequent Fallout game even though Fallout 76 did take place in West Virginia. So, I mean, given Vault 76 is mentioned in Fallout 3, and we do know that at various points long before Fallout 76 came out, Bethesda were thinking about the Virginia area as a good setting for Fallout, it's possible this was supposed to be a slight hook of some description into something that was going to happen in Fallout 76. But, like, then it just didn't. Because to date, there is no tailor in Virginia mentioned at all in 76, which is just so bloody weird. But like, I'm guessing this was supposed to originally hook into something in the future. As for more generally, why there are two sexy pieces of matching underwear owned by two brothers who will aggressively fight to the death to protect them, I have no cocky clue. Someone in Bethesda is just a bit weird. And uh, yes indeed, if you'll pardon me for stepping into an alternate universe for just one second, we are going to very quickly kill Lagbolt. Though, seriously, as you can see here, he's actually really tough. Like, he's got a lot of cocking health. Like, a sneak attack, multiple hits. It's going to take an entire Vats rounder with that gun to finish him off. He is a tough cookie, but he's also got 10 million unique things on him. He's got his own unique combat armor, giving you plus 10 to AP, plus 10 to big guns. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the base game Fallout 3, that's it. For some reason, the mod's also giving him plus 10 to guns in general. I swear that's not there in the base game. And also on top of that, hang about, his shades giving plus 3 to sneak and plus 3 to lockpick. So... In Fallout 3, that's pretty good. Like, not many pieces of eyewear in Fallout 3 do give you stats. In New Vegas, there's loads of them. In Fallout 3, for the most part, eyewear is really bloody boring. So, uh, yeah, these are actually pretty bloody good. But I would say no. No, 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 no. Instead, we're just going to uh, sneak over the top here and leave Lagbolt alone. Okay, there is a no reason whatsoever for this poor chappy to die. He's never going to learn about his dead, possibly girlfriend, possibly not who bloody knows. Uh, but like, there's no way to tell him even if you do try and go up to him. So uh, sadly, that's just how this deeply baffling mission ends. With you either murdering or robbing a lug nut's brother. But yes, to me, the bit about that mission that always does stand out is uh, the fact that Lagbolt only spawns uh, after you've listened to that tape. And the only way to listen to that tape is to be doing Who Dares Wins and have got to the train station at the end. At the very moment you're about to complete the game. So, speaking of which, obviously I probably should be getting back to the train station at this point. Going to Adams Air Force Base, wrapping things up, saving the world, etc, etc. But 
How about we go and have a visit to a few things around the wasteland that up to this point have just not really managed to fit into any individual episode because uh, Fallout 3 is full of uh, oddities and sometimes a few of them have just been left by the wayside. So, okay. We're going to be starting off in Andale and making our way west. So, um, okay. This would appear to be, yes, presumably a water caravan given a riveted security are all the way out here. Gonna be honest, guys. I feel like you may have lost an important constituent part of your water caravan, but okay, I'm not gonna tell them how to do their jobs. As I was saying, all I want to do is mosey on west. Bringing me to the Overlook Drive-In, a fairly unremarkable looking outdoor drive-in cinema, aside from one rather fun thing about the way it's been laid out. Which is this place you may notice is filled with various raiders who are just chilling out right here in the middle of a giant pile of cars, meaning if you get very, very lucky indeed, don't mind me, there's a guy over there, so we don't care about him, just to you know, activate this and, uh, oh yeah, here we flipping go, it's one of the biggest, stupidest chain reactions of cars in the entire game, it's delightful, in fact, you know what, no, 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 let's see if we can get a better angle than that. Here we go, this looks pretty good, just round about to here, and, uh, oh yeah. Right there, good six or seven cars are all going up. All the raids inside are obviously die instantaneously. The Overlook Drive-In, spectacular. It's just one of those tiny, tiny areas in Fallout 3 that really, you know, is just here for a single bit of spectacle. But honestly, I'm okay with that. All right, that's fine by me. Seeing six mushroom clouds simultaneously, that's enough to make me happy for the day. And speaking of cars, as we move on to our next destination, on this occasion I'm starting nearby to, yes, a Fort Independence or the Fairfax Ruins, which we've explored previously. Just make your way kind of northeast to east from this location. Alternatively, for a bit of a longer walk, just head due south from Megaton, because there is a rather cool building with a lot of stuff going on inside it that just isn't a marked location in Fallout 3. So if you rely on the compass to navigate, and many people very naturally do, you're just going to not realise there's anything cool going on here. Here we go, relative to, yes, Megaton, a Grey Ditch, and the Fairfax Ruins. This should be about right. You'll know you're in the right place because uh, there's a gas station right over there. So uh, this building here is not important in the slightest as far as the game's concerned. No compass marker, no tick, no anything. However, it does have a rather interesting interior. If we just uh, mose on inside, uh, this here is a car dealership. So yeah, you've got a proper showroom right here. The cars are a bit worn down at this point, but um, yes, there was clearly like, you know, a proper display. And if we just uh, mosey on over on this side, there's a couple of much smaller cars too. These ones are not big enough or I suppose expensive enough to deserve a big showy display right on the shop floor. Then at the top, we've got this lovely area where people would discuss financing and diddly diddly d, waiting area, etc, etc. So, okay. Why is there a car dealership just floating around in Fallout 3 when it doesn't do anything, there's no enemies, there's no NPCs, it doesn't go anywhere, no one ever shows up, no one ever asks you to come here, even the compass doesn't think it's important. Well, I think this is a very soft reference back to the original Fallout, because cars in the Fallout universe were a much bigger part of the old Fallout compared to new. Obviously, you know, most famously in Fallout 2, you literally repair and then ride around in your very own car. But way back in Fallout 1 as well, the very first intro cutscene, pulling away from the television to reveal the devastation of the post-apocalypse, on it, there's an advert for a car on sale for 200,000 US dollars, suggesting either inflation got a bit out of hand in America at some point, or alternatively, income disparity got a bit bananas. Maybe both, who knows? And this extends in Fallout 1 to the random encounters as well. Because yes, in Fallout 1, you could just run into a car dealership if you were moseying around in the wasteland. Bob's pre-owned car mart. It was a random encounter where you could speak to Bob, and Bob just tried to sell you a car, even though the cars were all junk and none of them could work. Though, in Fallout 2, one of the cars could work. So maybe Bob was just ahead of his time, damn it. But... Yes, I choose to think the reason these cars are here in their own location is just a bit of a reference to the fact that cars used to be a much bigger part of Fallout culturally back in the days of old Fallout. And speaking of things that kind of go 
fast, I suppose. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't really have a good, like, you know, connection for the last thing I want to show off today. Though it is rather conveniently close by. Though, on the way out, by the way. Can we just blow up the car shop? The answer turns out to be yes. You can blow up the car shop. Beautiful. I was like a second ago. I enjoy explosions. There we go. There's an explosion. Here we go. My current location is right next to Greatage, which is precisely where I want to go next. Though, um, on the way, just... Be a bit careful of, uh, yes, a very large enclave camp, including sentry bots, hellfire troopers, etc, etc. These guys are not what I care about. We're just going to be working around them. Here we go. Following morning, and what I'm looking for is a road coming west out of Grey Ditch. So, okay. I think this is the right one. And if it is, then what I should start seeing on the road down below, thanks to my compass, is... Uh, a blend of, yes, red, and also there should be... There's the red, the green. I think we found it. My favourite dumb Easter egg event thing in all of Fallout 3. This one's not random, it's always here, but it never respawns. So, if you disturb it by mistake, then yes, that's a very, very bad indeed. Because what we've got here is the Mole Rat Racers. It's just a uh, stay at the top. Put my gun away. Obviously, we're not going to cause trouble for the mole rat racers right here. So, yes indeed. This is just a really lovely racetrack that the raiders have set up using barbed wire to race mole rats against each other. The mole rats just all day run to the end. The one that gets there first goes up onto his hind legs and the raiders cheer. Which I find just deeply, deeply delightful. Though, much like in Fallout 4, you can't go down and bet on the racers, which is very, very sad indeed, because, uh, yes, Fallout 4 had an even more elaborate Raider race course in the form of the Robot Racers. That one, it was even sadder that you couldn't go down and bet, though you may have also noticed in the background there, like, a lot of attention has been put into this. There is literally a starting shot. That Raider, by the cages, uh, he fires his pistol to denote when the Mole Rat set off. Like, that there's just such a lovely touch. I really enjoy that. Okay, one more race, because I'm pretty sure we've seen a yes. Left hand to win one and right to win one. Honestly, of course, it just goes down to whoever sets off first, because uh, they do travel at the same speed. So on this occasion, it was just the one on the right there. They really seem delighted by that. So uh, I've decided these mole rats need a break. And these mole rats aren't going to turn on me, because I'm a friend to the animals, damn it. Just a hop up here. Basic Raiders, uh, yes, this should be surprised that's only 69%, to be honest. I mean, it's good enough. Right there, lovely. You're armed with boxing gloves, a beautiful. 50-50, we're going to hit you sooner or later. And you survived that, well done. Down goes your head there, beautiful. But yes, now I'm just getting my AP back every time I get a kill, which is lovely. Second shot should finish you off, and there's your head down bottom, beautiful. You've got a melee weapon, which is uh, highly unfortunate. And you, buddy, need to go down as well, though... Okay, you first, because at this point, yes, I'm pretty sure I've put some lovely Raider giblets onto the race course. So the Mole Rats now get to eat Raider for breakfast, which is lovely for them. And just out of interest, like, are they going to start racing again? Because that guy's shooting me. Because, like, he is firing his starting gun. So they genuinely... I think he's got bored and lost me. So... I mean, well cocked and done, you magnificent bastard. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Now I'm just curious, which is, uh, we just take you out nice and fast. Down goes your face too. Mole rats are now going to, you know, just mosey on back to the starting block. But without the gun, do they actually set off racing? And if not, can I make them set off by, like, you know, firing the gun myself? And is it this particular gun? So, okay, we're going to do some experimentation into the great mole rat race right now. Don't worry, guys. Uh, me and you, we're going to be best friends. You don't need to race for them anymore. Because it's possible the gun is, in fact, yes, just a bit of a con. And they just set off according to a timer. And uh, this guy fires his gun on the same timer. So, uh, it's time to see whether they're actually ever going to do anything if we leave them alone. Because... Uh, Okay, if there's one thing I enjoy doing, 
It's testing completely tiny bits of Fallout 3 to destruction. Okay, they've not set off again, and they definitely should have done by now. So, uh, I'm going to stand uh, roughly where the guy was standing, and then... It turns out it needs to be him, okay? They do not respect me as the Master of Ceremonies. That is uh, very, very sad indeed. So, just... Nope, they definitely don't care. And don't worry, they're not actually trapped forever because, yes, there is a broken bit of uh, the fencing right here. So, uh, one day, when they choose to, they can leave, uh, just, you know, go out here and make their way to a bright new future elsewhere in Fallout 3. And on that delightful test, I'm going to call it a part there. Now, I appreciate this episode's probably going to be a bit shorter than the others. As some of you may know, if you follow me on Twitter or whatnot, yes, we've got some stuff going on right now in many of Trudeau's headquarters. The builders are in, there's a lot of noise during the day, meaning the amount of time I've got to record is actually massively restricted at the moment. So, yes, slightly shorter episode this week. Sorry about that, but next week, it's the big one. We are going to Adams Air Force Base. We are exploring all the secret corners dotted around that location. Because, obviously, what else would you expect from this series? So, hopefully, you join me next week for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rad scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet though, I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.